This is a hardware review and I think it would be very remiss of me not to mention the fact that this device here arrives with an Intel Atom CPU. It's a newer generation, the C3538, but let's be honest, that is a little bit of an old chip for a modern NAS, particularly given that this device here in the background has that great Celeron chip, the J3455. So why should you, the business owner, be looking at this? <laughs> guys welcome back to the channel today we're going to do a hardware review of the DS2419 Plus this is the second new release this month from the guys at Synology of their new disk station series for 2019 now I don't know if you can make it out there in the background but we've still got the DS1019 Plus that great 4k media NAS with caching that was released the exact same day as this one um, but the price difference, of course, is enormous. The price difference on the DS1019 Plus, that's about 550, 560, depending on where you buy. And this bad boy is 1,200 pounds. And that's without that and without the hard drive media. So not including these two bad boys over here. Now, so why is this device so interesting? Well, let's, do you know what? Let's be completely fair about this. The hardware itself may seem a little bit underwhelming for 2019. This is a hardware review and I think it would be very remiss of me not to mention the fact that this device here arrives with an Intel Atom CPU. It's a newer generation, the C3538, but let's be honest, that is a little bit of an old chip for a modern NAS, particularly given that this device here in the background has that great Celeron chip, the J3455. So why should you, the business owner, be looking at this? Well, the clue was in the title, business. This device is not designed for people that want to enjoy 4K Plex Media servers in their home cinema. It has an enormous amount of storage space. I mean, look at it, 12 bays and a 14 TB drive being the standard. Uh, of biggest drive out there with 16s on their way this is an enormous amount of storage on top of that it supports all of the business applications from Synology ranging from virtual machine manager to surveillance station to active backup to Synology chat, Synology drive, Synology moments, Synology office and all of those things that basically let you in, have an entire business run from this device as well as a multitude of cloud, network and USB backup options but that's enough about the device's software we're here to talk about hardware. Now, that CPU, uh, 2.4 gigahertz that can be uh, in quad core, is a little underwhelming, let's be honest. A CPU go uh, for business, you'd hope you'd get a Pentium or a Xeon perhaps, but for this price point, this is a great balance between hardware storage and hardware power. The device itself, each one of the trays, is um, click and load only, which means you don't need a screwdriver to install hard drives. If you checked out my video, uh, video review, you'll know that these drives themselves are installed really, really easily. You just slot the drive into the bay, grab your clips, pop your clip on the other side, pop that one there, and your drive is installed. You pop the drive straight inside, and wallop, you're done. There's even lockable trays here, which mean that we can, let's get that brightness up a bit there for you guys. Those trays can all be locked to make sure that the device is going nowhere. Now, you can populate this with one, two, three, as many drives as you want and add drives as you go. And if you use BTRFS as the file system with those self-healing backups, as well as Synology Hybrid RAID or SHR on this device, you are able to have a great amount of storage. Now, I will double check in advance that SHR is available on this. I know you've got all of the RAID configurations, but Synology has a tendency to be rather selective about which ones of their units have SHR. So for now, I'm pretty sure it's got SHR, but if I'm wrong, it will say here at the bottom of the screen right now. If there's nothing there, we're good. Now, the device itself not only can have that fluid RAID or any RAID ranging from RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 10 and more, but what you can also do is use some of the bays for SSD caching. What that means is, let's go for this bay down here, is you can install this SSD or indeed any 2.5 inch SSD inside one or two of these drives, screw it in using those screw holes that you see on the screen and then install it inside the device. So once you've got your SSDs inside, you can then take advantage of SSD cache. Now, SSD cache gives you a number of the benefits of having a NAS that's fully populated 
with solid state drives, but without the enormous cost. So if you populated this fully with SSDs, you would get insane speeds. Don't get me wrong, you will be limited by connection bottlenecks, such as the one on the rear that we'll talk about later on. But full SSDs, although hugely expensive, will give you an enormous amount of speed that in most cases is greater than that of mechanical hard drives in a RAID. However, you can partially populate this with hard drives in the correct RAID, even a RAID 5 or RAID 6, which is traditionally one of the slowest RAIDs, with two SSDs in a RAID, <coughs> a RAID 1 environment, so for SSD caching, and the speeds you get will be pretty damn close to SSDs. But with the added benefit, that you didn't have to spend a fortune on smaller SSDs, and you spent less on big, big, big hard drives and just a couple of SSDs, maybe four if you want to be really, really safe. Um, there's LEDs here at the top denoting network access on one of the four LAN ports, as well as status, access and alerts, and of course, individual LEDs for each one of these drives. Let's turn this device around. Now the rear of this device gives us quite a lot in terms of ports, connections, ventilation and more. Let's get the easy stuff out of the way. On the back here, we've of course got the ventilation of these two fans that can be controlled manually or automatically to heighten or lower their rotations per minute on the device. If we remove the clips, we're able to remove the fan area and clean it out as and when needed. Let's see if I can get that off. I haven't removed one of these in a very long time and I get the impression I'm not going to be able to remove this on camera without looking like a great fool. Let's have a look. No, this doesn't want to play the game. Maybe we'll get that off after the video. How terribly embarrassing. But at the top here, we have got this PCIe slot. Now, this is very, very important. This PCIe slot enables you to attach further SSD caching, which is so-so. But what you're really interested in is 10 gigabit Ethernet. The ability to have 10 times the speed of traditional network. If you install a 10 GB card inside this device, it enables you to have 10, 10 times the usual speed. Now, that could be fed into a 10 GB switch, which is great. Everyone in the network would then get increased or maximum 1 GBE if they're on a 1 GBE, or anyone connected via 10 GBE to a 10 GBE switch into this 10 GBE enabled NAS if you put the card via one or two ports, will get those speed benefits. But for me personally, one of the greatest ways you can use a NAS in 10 GBE is connecting it directly to your computer. So if you've got a 10 GBE enabled computer or laptop or a Thunderbolt laptop and one of these, and I'm not mucking around off camera, this is a Sonnet Solo 10G. It gives you the ability to connect a 10 GBE cable from here into that card and then this end, this Thunderbolt end, into your Thunderbolt machine, letting you edit directly on this NAS. And thanks to techniques such as non-linear editing, mapped network drives, and of course, the system itself, along with Photoshop, Premiere, Final Cut to say the least, you can edit directly photo and video on this NAS over 10 GBE as fast, and in some cases faster, than an SSD on your client machine. So on your Mac or PC, if you've got an SSD there, and not an NVMe, but a standard SSD, it can actually be faster to edit on multiple mechanical hard drives that are in the right RAID via 10GBE and or Thunderbolt connectivity with this device. Very, very advantageous. With the added ability that you can have multiple RAID configurations inside this device. So in that score, it means that you can have one RAID altogether that you're editing on live, which can then be archived onto the other one. And with that SSD caching option, the speeds can only get better. Now say you don't want to look at 10 GBE, well, you've got USB here for backups, but you can't really use that as a form of connection and you shouldn't. But what you have got is four 1 GBE ports. This device supports link aggregation, and the result with this would be that via link aggregation, up to four GBE is possible once you connect these four cables into a smart switch that supports link, link aggregation or lag, or port trunking, it's known by many terms, or connected to a machine that has multiple LAN cables. You can set this up with a system of load balancing or link aggregation to get incredible speeds. Not as good as 10 GBE, don't get me wrong, but still pretty good. Now the device can also be expanded here. 
utilizing this expansion slot. This slot here will let you attach a 12 bay expansion, hence how the DS2419 Plus gets its name. Of course, you will have to spend extra, but the RAID will be spread over the two devices side by side. And it's hugely advantageous to a number of you to know that you've got those long-term storage appliances available. Now, it arrives with a three-year manufacturer's guarantee, uh, warranty, I should say, but also you can expand that to a further five years total with a two-year expansion of the warranty, I should say. So, in many ways, this is a forward-thinking device in terms of storage and in terms of service. But a lot of you are still going to be hitting that bottleneck with regard to that CPU. You're wondering whether the CPU inside this device is going to stand the test of time. I will say for business, for virtualization use, uh, as iSCSI use, for surveillance use, and as a file server, this is gonna be phenomenal, as well as as an email server, and those great chat and uh, document applications, this is a good, good device. But if you already have a very powerful NAS system, it could be advantageous to use this as a network backup, because the hardware inside is more than proficient to keep things moving forward. And personally, I would recommend this device over a number of low key devices for business because a lot of businesses think a network backup can just be a dumb box, but it is more than that. It has to be a, a powerful, robust back end, forgive the pun, um, that this device has to be there for you. So for me personally, uh, the 2419 Plus, although it isn't great for home users, it's definitely not great for people who are focusing on media playback in almost every other regard, this is a pretty good NAT indeed. And for that amount of storage at 1200 Nicker, I'm impressed. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to giving this same comparison between this and the 2415 Plus, several years older. And I will see you on the next video. Cheerio.